Queen Elizabeth has been on the throne for 70 years, making her the longest reigning monarch in Britain. Although this isn't something that affects our everyday lives, it's still hard to imagine what life would be like if she did pass away. After all, if you're below the age of 75, you won't even remember life without her as the Queen. More so, not just what will happen after she dies, but what will happen in those first initial days. Such a high profile woman like this has got to be something planned, right? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today, because you are watching Not So Clueless, where I'm going to tell you 10 things that will happen once the Queen dies. Number one, the code. Every royal has a code for when they die so the information don't get leaked to the wrong person or too soon. So everything can go as planned. For the Queen, that code is London Bridge is down. So if you're ever in a newsroom and you overheard London Bridge is down, you know what's just happened. Number two, once the Queen dies, Edward Young, who's the Queen's private secretary, will call the Prime Minister and say those illicit words, London Bridge is down, before the information is released to 15 other countries where the Queen is head of state and the rest of the 36 Commonwealth nations. This is all done by the Foreign Office's Global Response Centre, which is housed at an unknown location in London. Number three, after the Prime Minister has found out, after all the Commonwealth countries and the 15 countries where the Queen is head of state has found out, it's then our turn to find out. A statement will be released to the press association with all the other news outlets. At this stage, main TV channels will call regular programs, news readers will wear black suits and ties, DJs on air will see a blue light flash, which means the cut to the news ASAP, and blanket coverage will be Again. Number four, at the same exact moment and in keeping with tradition, a footman in morning clothing will post a black edged notice on the gates of Buckingham Palace. Also at the same time, the Royal Family's official website will show the announcement on its homepage. All this will happen pretty quickly and with quite the organisation. There will be no on-air scrambling. Most of the major news channels already have stories ready to go. The Guardian reports that its deputy editor has a list of prepared stories for the Queen's death pinned to his wall. Specific spots next to Canada Gay at the bottom of Green Park, they've already been agreed by the BBC, ITV, and Sky, as well as some other news outlets, so there's no scrambling for a good spot. Like I said, news readers are expected to wear black suits and ties, which they already keep on standby with them at all times, ready to quickly change into before any coverage begins. Number five, as soon as Queen Elizabeth dies, Prince Charles will instantly become king. At this point, he's permitted to choose his own name, but is expected to become King Charles III. At this stage, a meeting of the Accession Council will take place at St. James's Palace, and all the formalities will take place. He will officially be named King one day after the Queen's death. Number six, flags will be lowered to half mast, bells will toll in churches around the city. Westminster Abbey's famous tenor bell, rung in the event of royal death, will be heard, as on most solemn occasions. Westminster's bells, they will be muffled. Number seven, the nation enters a 10 day period of mourning before the funeral. For a number of those days, the body will remain at Buckingham Palace so the family can spend time together. After that, the Queen will then be moved to Westminster Hall where she will lie in state for a number of days so that the public can come pay their respects. And then, number eight, on the 10th day, the Queen's body will be moved to Westminster Abbey for a state funeral. The funeral will be attended by state officials from all over the world and will be coordinated by the armed forces and government. Now, before we continue, we should rightly address what would happen if the Queen did not die in London. Operation London Bridge may be quite difficult if she were, say, in another country. Right, this well thought out plan could be ripped apart. So here are a few differences that may take place. Number one, if the Queen dies in another country, then the royal equivalent of Air Force One will fly royal undertakers along with a coffin to return the Queen's body to London. 
Anywhere else in London, a car would collect the Queen to return her body to the palace. Now what about if that place is at Balmoral Castle? Things get slightly complicated. Balmoral Castle is in Scotland and the Queen spends at least three months of the year there. But you can imagine that she could pass away there. If that was the case, the body would be moved to Holyrood House in Edinburgh and then carried up the Royal Mile to St Gill's Cathedral for a funeral service. By then the public will be notified and will likely line up to throw flowers at the Royal Train, which would carry the body back to London for the burial service. That being said, back to the list, we are now on number 9 and that is that Charles is scheduled to make a speech on the evening of the Queen's death to address the people. A speech that for everyone at a certain age is going to remember. That will be one of those things where people say, where were you? Where Charles gave his first speech as King. Number 10, as Charles does become King, William will move to take the position of is apparent. They'll likely also take the title of Prince of Wales, which is traditionally given to the next in line to the throne. This would make Kate the Princess of Wales, but because this was Diana's title, she may opt out for another out of respect to her late mother-in-law, which she probably would. Now I know I said I was only going to give you 10, but why not go in with a number 11, which is on the day of the funeral, businesses will be closed and the funeral will air on live TV for all to watch and all to mourn. After the funeral, the same carriage that carried the Queen's father will carry the Queen to a final resting place which will be at St George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. After all this, for the regular people living in England, things are just going to carry on pretty much as normal. We'll eventually have a new coin with Charles on it instead of the Queen. We'll be singing God Save the King instead of God Save the Queen. And it'll be Charles showing up to head all of these royal events instead of the Queen. Well, that's about it. Charles is pretty old as it is already. So when this does happen, it won't be the longest time. We're not going to have another 70 years of Charles on the throne before that's passed on to the next person, which at this point will be William. I mean, heck, Charles could renounce the throne and say, I don't want to be king and pass it straight to William. We just don't know. That probably won't be happen because Charles has waited longer than any other man in Britain to take the throne. So it seems he's been preparing for this his whole life. He is probably going to step up to the plate. But just know that he could renounce it. He could say no. So there we go. That is 10 plus 1 things that will happen once the Queen dies. You have been watching Not So Clueless with me, your host Cameron. And do enjoy the rest of your day.